In this video tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate the circles Photoshop action. So this is the photo that I'll use to demonstrate the effect. I'll play the action and it's going to recreate this. So I'll run through um, how the action works, how to set up your Photoshop file, um, then how to customize the effect after the action's finished. And then uh, when I'm done talking about this photo, I'm going to open up this photo here. I'm going to play the action again and I'm just going to go through the motions of um, customizing the effect, move away from the default result, just so that you get a um, good understanding of a you know a good workflow when using this action. So I'll just click through a few more examples that I have uh, of the effect. So basically, the way the action works is that firstly we define an area of our photo where we want to concentrate all the effects around. So with this particular example, I, um, I traced around this guy and I played the action, I got this result here. And so what the action does is that it spreads out the colors of your photo. So you can see around his pants here, how that blue sort of bled out. Um, around his arms here, how the orange, the skin tones have bled out and the green. Uh, and then it just yeah, creates all these circles and overlays them on top of everything to build the overall effect. So this image, so you can see how the colors are all spread out there. This particular example, I uh, I wanted to go for that look, so I manipulate the colors a lot. Creates a bit more room. Where was I? Seven. That. Alright, so I'll close these down. Uh, Control W or Command W to close uh, Photoshop document down. Okay, so we'll start from scratch. So I'm going to go through the motions now of talking about how to set up your Photoshop file and things to make sure of um, just so that you don't run into any errors with the action. So firstly, look into your layer panel and make sure that your photo layer looks identical to this. Uh, it should say background and have that lock symbol there. So for example, if it doesn't, so I'll just set this up so that it doesn't. So say I open up my photo and it looks like this. What you need to do is go to layer, new background from layer, and that will set it as the background. So that's all ready to go. Uh, still in the layer panel, go right up to the top right hand corner icon, go to panel options. Just stand the bottom, make sure add copy to copy layers and groups is ticked. Click OK. Uh, next, go to Image Mode. Make sure you're in RGB Color Mode. 8 bits of channel is ticked. Go to Image Size. Make sure you're using a high resolution photo. You can see the size of mine there. A good range for this action is between 2000 to 4000 pixels. Um, the action will still work under 2000 pixels, but uh, for the best results, use uh, try to go between a range of, yeah. 2,000 or 4,000 pixels. Okay, so I'll cancel that. Now what I need to do is create a new layer. So go to layer, new layer, and this must be called brush, all in lowercase, B-R-U-S-H, click OK. So there's the brush layer. Uh, so with the brush layer selected, what I need to do is uh, trace around my subject, and that's where I'm going to um, apply all the effects around. Uh, so there's a few ways you can do this. I can hit B on the keyboard. That'll get the brushes out. Now if I right click anywhere over the canvas, I can select a soft brush, um, use the square brackets to adjust the brush size. See that there? And then I can pick a color, it doesn't matter. And you can start sort of brushing over your photo to highlight the areas that you want to apply the effects around. Um, but what I might do is I'll close this down because I've already um, traced around this one here. Yeah. Okay. So what I've done here, I've just traced around my subject. I've uh, just softened up the edge here so it tapers off a bit better. So you can see my brush layer there. And yeah, I've highlighted the area that I want. So now uh, I need to load up the actions panel. So go to window actions. It'll pop up to the side here. 
go up to this top icon, go to load actions and select circles.atn. Okay, I'll come back to that in a sec. So what we need to do now is load up the brushes that were included in the download. So again, if I just hit B on the keyboard, get the brushes out, right click, uh, go to this icon here, go to load brushes, select circles brushes.abr and they will just pop up down the bottom there okay now uh, so another thing to check before running the action it's just a good habit to get into is to go to edit purge all that will just erase um, any history that's banked up in Photoshop we can just help with the playback of the action um, and lastly if you hit B on the keyboard again just make sure that the opacity of your brush is at 100% up the top here Okay, um, you may run into errors if it's lower than 100%. Uh, so, okay, so let's keep that in mind. <clears throat> okay, so almost ready to go. So inside the circles action folder, there's two uh, options here. It's photo with light background and photo with a dark background. Okay, so basically what this is saying is that um, the area around the area that you brushed is it light or dark? Okay, so looking at this image here, um, you'd probably lean towards the light side, so I'm just gonna select photo with light background. Um, I'll explain to you when the action's finished what the difference between these two are, and you know, say if you're a bit unsure and you run the action on the light background, how to um, adjust the results um, so it basically matches this one. Um, after the action's finished, so I'll explain all that. Okay, so I'm going to twirl this open so I can get an idea of um, how much time the action's got left to play back. So when I could plan the action, this scroll bar will go down like this, it'll go through all the steps, it'll give you an idea of how much time it's got to go. Uh, the action on my computer takes about two minutes to play back, so I'll just play the action now and I'll fast forward the video and I'll get to the result and we'll talk about all the layers and what they do. Okay, so the action's finished and you can see the result that I got. So keep in mind that the colors that are created um, in the background are based on the area that you brushed. So you remember that I traced around my subject here. So what it does, it takes those colors, um, adds a lot more saturation to it and spreads it out all over the background. Okay, so, and the arrangement of all these circles are completely randomized. So even if I run the action again, with the same brushed area, the positioning of all these circles will be completely different. All right, so I will minimize the actions panel and look into the layer panel now. So the first thing that I want to do is collapse all these folders quickly. So we've got a need a workflow. So to do that, hold down Control Alt or Command Option on a Mac and click on this arrow next to the um, circles folder icon. Click on that and everything's collapsed. All right, so I've kept, I've kept the um, brush layer hanging around at the top here. So if you want to run the action again, shift select these two folders, adjustments and circles, delete them, and you can just play the action again. So I'll come back to the adjustments folder and go into the circles folder, and I'll talk about straight away the things that I like to experiment with as soon as the action's finished. So firstly, what I like to do is uh, go down to the circles folder here, and change the blend mode from normal to pass through and basically ask yourself do you like the circles brighter or softer okay so that's the very first thing that I always like to check okay so down to the circles folder change the blend mode from normal to pass through alright so for this particular photo uh, I think I might go with pass through, I'll just make them a little bit brighter. So just keep in mind that this will also depend on how bright your background is as well. So your original photo background. So that's why I created these two options here. Photo with light background, photo with dark background. So if I, if this um, photo had a pure white background and I ran the action photo with dark background, um, the default blend mode of this layer is set to pass through. So the circles are going to be extremely bright and blown out. 
So that's why it's just good to judge before you run the action um, which two you which uh, action you want to run. Uh, but if you um, get to the result and the circles are either too dim or too bright, all you need to do is select that circles folder and flick between normal and pass through and just judge which one you like better. Alright. Now, secondly, what I like to do is clear up um, the feature of the photo that I want to be really in focus and not clouded with too many effects. So her face, you can see her nose and her lips have all these dots over the top of it. I want to clear all that out so that my yeah, this is much clearer. So to do that, go to this layer here, reveal normal photo, brush mask, I've got in brackets here. So basically, you select this mask here, this black mask, and grab a white brush. So I'll hit B on the keyboard, right click, and I'll just get a soft brush. Use the square brackets to adjust the brush size. So now if I grab a white brush, I'll just flip this over, and I'll start brushing. What that does, it reveals the original photo, basically the area that we brushed over our photo um, with no effects applied, because this layer sits on top of everything else, so it overrides all the effects. So what I like to do is I just brush, you know, a big area over the um, photo that I want to be um, much clearer with no effects applied. And what I'll do, I'll just I'll move my mouse over the word opacity. I'll click and drag to the left, and I'll lower the opacity of that layer. So if I bring it to zero, that's the original state. But if I bring it to 100, that's when we brushed over the mask. So you start off at zero and you know slowly drag to the right and get to uh, a level that you know there's a good balance between the original photo and the effects. So that's pretty good. Now what I want to do is brush away um, those little dots. Okay. So the way you can do that is the circles folder here. If you turn that on and off, that has all the circles inside. So we can use this folder mask just to brush away any details that we don't want. So if I hit B again, this time I want a black brush because I want to remove elements. So with masks, if you brush black, it will remove it. If you brush white, it will bring it back in. So I want to brush black around this area. Just remove um, any dots around there. So with those two layers combined, those two layer masks, you can really clear up um, areas of your photo that you want to be much more focused. Okay, I'll go back up to the top here. This layer here, middle contrast, and I've got in brackets again, opacity. Um, when I've got in brackets opacity, it means to play around with the opacity of the layer. That's how it's affecting the design. So currently it's at 60%. So I'll click and hold that word opacity, and I'll drag to zero. Then I'll drag it to 100. So you can clearly see what that layer does. So um, I'll start at zero and I'll slowly drag to the right and that will increase the contrast. It increases the contrast around the center part of the canvas. So you can see this mask here. If I hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and click on that mask, it go inside. So anywhere in white is where that layer will affect the design. Um, and where it black it won't. So you can see that around the center part of the image as I adjust that opacity, it affects the design that way. So I'll just leave it around 50%. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, this layer here, blur photo edges. If you turn this one on and off, you'll notice around the edges um, of the area that we brushed, it starts to blur out. So again, the way that layer is controlled is that um, if I go inside this mask, so you'll see how, you remember how it was blurring around the edges, is because I've restricted this layer to only blur in the white area, but it won't blur in the black area. So just experiment with turning one, that one on and off to see if you prefer the design with the blurred out edges or not. Um, you might, you know, only like it 50% opacity. So again, adjust the opacity of that layer to tweak just to fine tune the look. This folder here, photo, to turn that one on and off. So that basically, um, if I go inside here, has two layers which are giving the most 
uh, amount of prominence to uh, the visibility of the original photo that we brushed in the design. You can see her face is a bit more prominent there. It's because we brushed onto the real normal photo here, the mask. I'll turn the one off. See that there? So this folder basically brings out the original photo. Um, I also brushed that area there. Okay, so again, uh, what I'd like to do is I'll you know flick this folder on and off and um, take a look around the design and there might be areas of the design that you prefer with it off. So again, use the folder mask. I can grab a black brush and say, you know, brush around the hat there. So just take, flick it on and off, take a look around the design. Um, if you prefer any areas with it off, use the mask. Okay, um, close folder. So this uh, folder affects the design quite heavily. I'll turn this one on and off. You can see there's a huge difference there. Uh, it, so you can see if I turn that off, um, all the circles are much more visible, spreads out everywhere. Um, you might prefer that look, so switch that one on and off to quickly check. But if you go inside here, um, you'll, I prefer to control these layers uh, manually. So there's three main layers here. Uh, I've got border, blur, slash glow, glow one, glow two. I'll explain what these do. So this layer here, um, if you adjust the opacity of this layer from zero to 100, and if I start at zero, it starts dragging to the right. You see what that basically does? It uh, creates a focus around the center of our design and sort of tapers off the light as it goes towards um, the border. Like that. So you can, you can bring it to 100% and it basically removes all the circles around the edges. Uh, but by default, I think I had it at around you know, 80% or something. So you can just see the circles as they taper off. So I'm just going to play around with this a bit. I need to slip there about, about eight, uh, maybe a bit lower. Something like that'll do. So there's two um, adjustment layers above this layer here to affect the appearance of that. Firstly, you probably don't want to play around with this one as a vibrance adjustment layer. I've just turned up the saturation um, to make the colors pop around the edges. Uh, you probably don't need to play around with that one. This one you want to play around with, change border blur color. If you double click on this, you can drag this hue this hue handle around and what that'll do is basically just affect um, the colors of the border. So you can see that there. So I might, let's, might go for something like that. Turn up the saturation a little bit. Just like that. Okay. Um, glow one is just if I turn that one on and off, that just adds a soft um, glow over the entire design. You can again choose the color, color one color layer. You can double click on that, play around with this handle here, and that will um, add some subtle color changes. So looking at this design, give it there. I might adjust the, I might bring this back off, tape off those circles a bit more, just so that the focus is more around the center of the design. Glow 2, um, again, play around with this handle here, just adds a subtle bit of glow over your subject. But I think I might leave it, I might check it with it off. No, I'll keep it on, just keep it those colours. So you definitely want to jump inside the glows fold here and adjust the opacity of this border blur layer, okay? And play around with the adjustment layers to affect the colours. This adjustment layer here, I've got halfway down, uh, the layer stack is randomized color. Uh, if you double click on this, drag this hue slider around. What that'll do is basically just randomize all the colors um, of the circles. So, I don't mind the colors that it's already up, but I'll just add a bit more red. Um, you can also crank up the saturation or lower it. So definitely play around with this uh, this layer here. Vertical light, if I turn that one on and off, you can see that just adds some light down the middle of the design. 
you can double click on this layer play around with the angle of this change the angle of the light um, the opacity is very low 70% turn that up just like that I think I like it about there mixed elements if I go inside here um, this is a couple of layers here this one here by default is off it's called smoke if you turn it on it just adds a tiny little bit of a smoky texture around your subject just for uh, just because of uh, yeah a bit of an abstract texture so you turn the one on and off um, see if you like it or not speckles and speckles too they are those tiny little dots you see um, around the area that you brush so if you look around the nose here so I'll turn these on and off so those there so if you don't want them turn them off I actually might leave these off for this example rings are the um, well the circles the, the rings you can see there around here if I turn that on and off if you want more um, just hit control J on the layer or command J it'll duplicate it so now I've just got a rings I can uh, attribute so I can move them around uh, you can scale them up if you want them bigger so let's play around with that uh, circles brightness this is just an adjustment layer if you want to play around with the brightness of the circles just double click on this layer grab this middle handle and just play around moving it up and down just like that so um, I think it's pretty good as is so I'll leave it circles it's got all the circles inside so uh, there's all the layers there if you um, want a lot more circles just duplicate the entire folder hit control or command J on the entire folder there Let's delete that uh, circle 7 glow you'll see uh, if you look around your neck there you'll see how those smaller circles have a glow around it it's coming from that layer there see that there so if you don't want that glow you can turn it off um, and you know you don't need to use all these layers you know I can just turn off a whole group here and you know most of the circles are gone so um, yeah don't feel you have to you know the default result of the action is what you need to go for you can you know turn them all off uh, another thing that you might want to play around with is adding a bit of a color variation to these circles and the way you can do that is um, if I just double click on this layer bring up the light the layer style panel I'll go to color overlay and see how you can apply um, different colors but you want to set this blend mode to color right down the bottom there or actually it might be saturation Flick between normal color, uh, normal, uh, what was it, color and saturation. It will depend on the brightness of your background. But you know, for example, if I just set to normal, I can just quickly change the color, of all those circles. So that's pretty cool as well. Uh, I'll cancel that. So you can go down the line there and manually um, recolor all the circles if you want. Lighting. If I turn this on and off. See what that does uh, that will this folder affects each photo differently so you're probably looking at thinking that doesn't do too much but uh, what I might do I'll turn no I I'll just leave it as is but basically if I go inside there's uh, a lot of gradient layers uh, vignette lower half shadow uh, and they all just basically help create um, a focal point around the center of the design like a lot of the light it's quite bright in the center and it sort of tapers off around the edges that's what this folder helps do uh, I've got these two layers here spotlight one and spotlight two if I drag them all the way up to the top here you see basically what they are they're two different light sources coming from yeah two different angles and uh, you know they sit inside this folder here but if you want them to be more prominent drag them all the way to the top and you can just double click on these layers and play around with the angle so I might like that and then I'll I can play around with the opacity same as this one so that way I've just created a really subtle light source coming 
um, on an angle here. So, yeah. Experiment with moving uh, layers up and down the order as well because that will, you know, can drastically um, adjust the look of the design. So just what I've done there, I've just moved these two spotlights out of there to the top. Original photo blurred. Uh, basically, the way this layer works is that um, anywhere, the area around the area that we brushed is just going to blur out uh, the background. So it's hard to tell in this example, um, but any details in the background are going to be blurred out. Okay, uh, background color, go inside here. Uh, by default, uh, the way this works is that it grabs the original colors of our photo, I increase the saturation, blur it out, and then use that as a background color. You can double click on this layer here to randomize the colors. And this is just um, a solid base for the effect. It's very subtle. Um, this is how it's the overall um, look up. So you can just go inside these folders and turn layers off and see how it affects the design. Uh, like I said, every photo, these layers will affect it differently. Okay. So now what I want to do is play around more with the colors. So if you go inside the adjustments folder at the top here, uh, what I've got is 10 color options here. And by default, color option one is turned on. So if I turn that off, you see that there, that's adding a bit of a gray. Uh, but the way these work is that you just turn on the visibility for these uh, folders like that and it will apply a um, subtle sort of color difference with each one. And you don't have to just use one, you can blend multiple together. So I might like that and that together. But say color option three is a bit too strong, I can lower the opacity down for that layer, just like that. Okay, so now I've got the two blended together. Um, but I think I like one near the bottom here. I think that one looks really nice. So I'm just going to try to... Actually, those two look good together. I'll play around the opacity. I think that looks pretty good. Um, so I've got these layers here as well. Overall contrast. So these four layers here will affect uh, the entire design. So overall contrast, opacity. If I play around the opacity of this, you see that increases the contrast. So I could start with 0%. Probably needs a little bit, so I'm going to drag it to the right just a bit. Overall color tint. If I double click on this one, you can add a color tint over your design. So I've just set the density to 1%. But if you drag this handle here, you see how that applies a color tint, this color here. Um, so this actually looks good with a little bit of this tone, but what you can do is just go through this drop down menu. So I'm just scroll through these colors. That's another way to affect the color, but I just like to use a little bit of this one. Overall brightness, double click on this one. Uh, you can play around with these handles here. It will affect the overall brightness. like that. I think I'll leave that. Overall saturation, double click on this. Play around with the saturation handle here. That will affect the overall saturation. So I actually might up it a little bit. Okay. So what I'd like to do is just you know play around with these color options and I'll you know flick back, I'll go inside here and I might play around with the randomized color again. You know, I just flick back and forth between trying different color options to just make sure there is no better option to go for or something that looks a little bit better. I think a lot of these colors look good, but I really like the these original colors here. So um, I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is close this down. I'm going to open up a second example and just go through the motions of um, customizing the moving away from the default result of the action. Okay, so I'll do that now. Okay, so now I've got open my second example. 
and I ran the photo with dark background and this is the result that I got. I haven't changed any of the layers yet. So I'll do that now. So firstly, collapse all these folders and layers. Control Alt or Command Option on a Mac. Click on the circles folder arrow. That'll collapse all those. So I'll hide these two folders to show the original photo. Okay, so uh, that was the area that I brushed. And looking at the design, it has quite a dark background. So photo with dark background. Okay, so I'll go inside the circles, go down to the circles folder here, and you'll see that the default blend mode is passed through. So if I set this to normal, so basically that's what the result would look like if I ran this photo with light background. Okay, so even if I ran the photo with light background, um, all you need to do is, yeah, go to the circles folder and flip between that and pass through. And that's basically the difference between these two layers, uh, these two actions here. Okay, so it's an easy fix if the circles are too dark, switch it to that blend mode, and then you can also use the circles brightness layer. If they're still too dark after changing the blend mode, you can just you know crank this up to increase the brightness. But I think this this is looking pretty good. Alright, so what do I want to do here? Firstly, I want to make the face more prominent. Okay, you can see that it's hidden behind um, quite a lot of color and blur at the moment so I'm going to go to the reveal normal photo I'm going to hit B I'm going to I need a white mask because I want to reveal that layer I'm just going to brush like that now so what I don't want is such a contrast between the original photo and all the, uh, the effects applied so again I lower the opacity down of this layer and it starts to blend back to so that's at zero that's at 100. So you want somewhere between. So I'm just going to lower this down. That looks pretty good. Uh, about 65%. So it's kept some of the blur. That just helps make the... If I hide this layer. See how it's just made the face uh, pop out a lot more. So that's a really important step that you want to do pretty much every time. So those two steps, the circles, blend mode, and straight up to here. Do those two straight away. Now what I want to do is take a look at uh, that border blur glow layer. I'm going to just lower the opacity. Something like that. So I want some of these circles to be a bit more visible around the edges. Just going to quickly check the color change. that purple or blue might go with that purple quickly check these two somewhere around here looks pretty good Keep it at that, just adds, added a little bit of yellow there. Quickly check this one, see if that's affecting. Oh, yeah. Okay, so. Maybe add a little bit of purple. <coughs> okay, I'll flick this on and off. So, what I might do, just to be a bit creative here, uh, looking around the legs here, see so you got those little dots there. What I might do is just erase the legs, so just have the dots. So you see if, as I turn that on and off, that looks pretty cool without the leg visible. So what I'm going to do is just use that mask, grab a black brush, hit B, get a soft brush out and you know, brush that away. You know, that just adds a bit more creativity. Now I'm going to check with the blur photo edges off. So you can see around the feet here and the arms as I'll turn that on and off. So I might leave it off, I think. Yep. I'm going to play around the contrast here, the middle contrast. That's pretty good. Randomized color. I'm going to quickly flick this around. 
green looks really cool. So that is up blue. That looks pretty good. But I think I like the original. So keep that. Uh, what else? Lighting. What I actually quite like, I'll zoom out a bit here, is I'll turn that lighting fold on and off. See how you can see the original photo in the background there? And it's slightly blurred out because it's falling down onto this layer here. So what I might do is grab that mask. I'll hit G on the keyboard. That'll grab the gradient tool. And I'll just set this from black to transparent. I'll grab that one there. And I'll just grab, I'll just um, draw a line up from the bottom. And what that'll do, it will hide that portion of the layer. So you can see the layer mask there. So I just drew that gradient from black to transparent. So where it's black, it's going to hide that folder. So now I've blended down onto the original background, which uh, looks pretty cool. So now, uh, what I might do, I might check with the mixed elements off. Might just turn it off so it's just um, so it's clean circles. Now I'm just going to flick, I'm going to go into the color options, flick through these. What I might do is I'll quickly just rename these as I go down so I know which ones I think look pretty cool. That looks good. So what, I've, what I might do, I'll grab these three. And uh, if I hit Control or Command on a Mac and hit the um, right square bracket, that will just group them and move them up to the top of the, um, we'll move them up the layer order here. So now what I can do is just flick between these three and just ask myself which one do I like better, basically. So I think they all look pretty good. One and two. I think this looks pretty cool. I'm just going to try add a little bit of tint. Might not need it. I'll try some different colours. That looks pretty cool. It's just like added a, a lot more red. It's like it's increased the saturation of all those circles. So I like that. I'm going to play around with the contrast. Oops. I think it's pretty good as it is. Uh, overall saturation I think looks pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, you can always adjust the entire um, opacity of the adjustments folder. So if I bring that to zero, 100, so I can drag down from 100. So I quite like it, you know, about. 75%. Uh, a quick more play around with this. I think the colors that I got are looking pretty good. So I might, might leave that. Uh, and one final step, what I might do is just add a blue glow around her glasses and maybe a bit more of a yellow glow around here. So how I do that is create a new layer right at the top here. So if I just hit Control Shift N or Command Shift N on a Mac, create a new layer, uh, set the blend mode to screen. Now if I hit B, get the brush out, uh, I'll get a blue. Now if I just now brush around the glasses, you'll see it adds a nice little glow. Okay, so now I'll create a no layer, set this to screen again, and I'll maybe grab a yellow or an orange. Uh, and I'll try to add a bit here. So the advantage of having them all on separate layers is I can move them around like that, and I can adjust the opacity. So I can move that up to there. Looks pretty good there. Um, I can also hit Control J just to duplicate that glow. Now I can move it down around the feet. I'll lower the opacity. I think that looks pretty good. And 
What else you can do is I'll go to that blue, whoops, that blue glow layer. Now if I just hit Control U or Command U, it'll bring up the hue and saturation. So I can just drag this handle around to quickly preview different colors. Just like that. But I think that purple looks pretty good. All right, um, happy with this? Okay, so that is essentially uh, it. That's how you use the action. Um, you know, it felt really easy to use. Uh, you just want to play around with, definitely want to play around with all the colors. Um, you know, flick layers on and off to see how they affect the design. You might like them, you might not. Um, so yeah, no limitations really. So if you need um, any help with the action, just send me an email and I'll assist. Uh, but if not, have fun using the effect. Thanks.